Bentley. <laughs> Me, I'm Annette, brother Polite's lovely wife. One of many wives, but the first wife. Coppers on them scanners. Bitch, I'm out here jamming. Hottest on the planet. Bitch, I'm out here jamming. Probably on surveillance. Like probably when they landing. We probably love the man. Bitch, I'm out here jamming. Hottest on the planet. Glow like body tanning. Who have that daddy tanning? Bitch, I'm out here jamming. Bitch, I'm out here jamming. Coppers on the scanners. Bitch, I'm out here jamming. Hottest on the planet, man, I glow like body tan Who has that Danny Tunnel? Bitch, I'm out here jamming Bitch, I'm out here jamming Niggas getting locked up, bitches going famine Did it for the family, no, you did it for the feeling You got that Dakota fanny on the arm, Eli Manning Hold up, it's all good, a week ago was jamming out this bitch Then them peoples came a week later and jammed them out this bitch Woody thick and flicked the both up in her camera roll up bitch Then that Hampton girl go OD off the end and a cool smell Wait Jamming out this B-I-T-C-H on the Sheffield Street Then I clearly ain't the name that ID states, but I ain't no fake I'm an alien from way deep out of space Just looking for some earth girls that's trying to procreate With the way going take till the MCA Straight up niggas, nigga MCA Pray for the sinners and judge the saints You do not know whom you face Hug your baby, nigga, love your face Trust my taste, I love them bass Who my niggas say we slimming Cause bitch, I'm out here jamming Probably on surveillance Like probably when they landing We probably love the man Bitch, I'm out here jamming Hottest on the planet, glow like body tanning Go hop that daddy tunnel, bitch I'm all here jamming Bitch I'm all here jamming, coppers on the scanners Bitch I'm all here jamming, hottest on the planet Man I glow like body tanning, go hop that daddy tunnel Bitch I'm all here It's hard for a disease to thrive in the environment Where the pH is above 7 Anything below 7 is considered acidic, anything above 7 uh, which would be considered alkaline. So when you're talking about pH, you're talking about potential hydrogen. You have negative hydrogen eons and positive hydrogen eons. When it comes to biology, negativity is actually positive and positivity is actually negative based on the connotation. So what you want is more negative hydrogen eons. That's what you want. And when the environment is filled with negative hydrogen eons, it is hard for microbes, bacteria, germs, and viruses and the likes to really thrive in that environment. So as I was telling you before, we die from a number of different reasons. It could be cancer, it could be AIDS, it could be diabetes. Uh, anemia impedes on our health as well as the longevity of our lives. Oftentimes when you go into, let's say, uh, the hospital, they give you treatment. And the thing is about those treatments, they're not really considering the quality of life. You know, we normally talk about how long a person is gonna live after they get the treatment, but they never take into consideration the quality of life. Like what good is living if the man in which I will live is as though I be dead anyway. So in other words, what the medical institutions of this world has been doing is pretty much prolonging life. It's, uh, pardon me, they've been prolonging death as opposed to prolonging life. And that's why if you even look into the game, and what I mean by game is, check this whole thing out, you have like Rite Aid, which is spelled R-I-T-E. R-I-T-E, which is ritual. If it was the right aid, as in the correct aid, the drugstore, the pharmacy, Rite Aid, it should be R-I-G-H-T, but instead it's R-I-T-E, and R-I-T means ritual. And then if you even go into your Bible, and you look for the word sorcery, you'll see it's under the Greek word, pharmakeia, right? And pharmakeia is what? Sorcery. That's what it is. So pharmacy is sorcery. So if I go to the right aid pharmacy, I'm going to have a ritual performed on me by way of the sorcery of the medical institution that facilitates the means to which and they can sell those particular drugs. So the drugs have us under a spell and they're conducting forms of sorcery each time you take into consideration that you're taking these drugs, it is impacting the way that you think, impacting the way that you live, impacting the way that you see the world. So again, RIT is ritual, all right? So you're going to write aid, you're going to have a ritual conducted on you. 
by way of their pharmacy or their pharmaceutical products. And again, pharmacy, pharmakeia means sorcery. So I'm not gonna tell you that all, every agenda in the hospital is negative and works against all people. I'm not gonna tell you that. But you must understand that it's a business. You must understand that the corporate means of that particular business has super saturated all agendas and premises that that institution has erected. So you're not really going to find a situation where you can honestly say, you know what, I can go to the pharmacy or I can go to the hospital and genuinely consider that they are going to give me something that's worthwhile or meaningful as far as prolonging life. Now, those people, <laughs> they are all about prolonging death. And like I said, what good is life and on account to having a disease just because you let me live longer when in fact I am living longer but I'm actually plagued and burdened by the lifestyle I have to live after your chemotherapy. Chemotherapy killed my mother. I only knew my mother for one week in my life. I met my mother when I turned 17 and she died the week that I met her. And had she not taken chemotherapy, she would have lived longer. You understand what I'm saying? Unfortunately, I didn't have this level of knowledge. I didn't know about a Dr. Sabi. I wasn't learned in this data myself. So, what you gonna do? <clears throat> so yeah, we almost where we gotta go. It's looking good. It's a beautiful neighborhood. This is why I also want to stress to you how important wealth is, building wealth. Because like my grandmother, she worked for a phone company for almost 40 years. That's when AT&T was called 9X. And she lost her house. She had the house for like 30 years. Inside a year and a half from the time she lost her house, she literally lost her mind. She had Alzheimer's. And I knew from that point forward, it was a direct correlation between poverty and disease. Her losing something she worked so hard for to obtain throughout her life, when it was taken from her seemingly overnight, she lost her mind. And that's, that's what debt does to us. Debt incurs disease. It's an absolute fact. And, like, and I do have a publication being released this year. I do have a publication being released this year that confirms that cancer, uh, AIDS, sickle cell, diabetes, have correspondences to different types of debts. And it may sound crazy now, but you gotta understand that disease is not inherited. And I have an actual lecture that I did on this in a DVD that's out. Disease is not inherited, bad habits are. And what you have to understand is emotions precipitate appetite and appetite transmutes into disease. The way you feel dictates the way you eat. And until you resolve those emotions, if those emotions go unresolved, you venture frustrations through what you eat, which is established through craving and appetite. And that's why I'm telling you, certain types of debts correspond with certain types of diseases. This is a fact. So equally so, it's not enough to just eat right. You also have to consider the way you live. The people you keep around you and the lifestyle that you have can plague you just as much as the foods that you are trying to avoid. So in other words, baby, I'm going left or right? Mm, <clears throat> not too sure. Going left. Going left. Yeah. The type of people you keep in your company, the type of environment that you live in can affect you just as much as eating bad food. So in other words, a person can eat as healthy as they want to eat. You can eat as healthy as you want to eat, but guess what's going to happen? You may turn around and still say, how am I sick? I've been doing my best to eat healthy. Well, you know what? You may have people around you that's making you sick. You may have people around you that offset certain types of emotions that produce the same type of toxins that you're trying to evade when you're eating good food. So being around some people is as though you're consuming swine just because of their energy. 
just because of their attitude. You understand what I'm saying? So you, it's not enough just to eat good. We also have to build wealth and create a better situation for us to thrive in and to live in more conducive environments that correspond with our ideal behavior patterns or thought patterns. If you think in progressively day to day and you're reading progressively day to day, but you live in a horrible environment or you have to work with people that are truly Holy disagreeable, God. if you have to be around people that are definitely disagreeable, obnoxious, then guess what? <clears throat> it's gonna happen. You in turn are going to find that you're going to wind up being sick. What is up with this dude? My goodness. It's clear what car he driving. Motherfucker driving nuts. Yeah, so it's all about the company that you keep and the environment you live in. So when people say, man, but you don't have to live in a big house. You may not have to. I have to. Because that makes me feel comfortable. And I need the space and I need the energy. I need to know that I don't have to worry about my children when they go outside to play. I need this peace of mind because that's cancerous too. Just sitting here worrying about your children day to day and if the environment that they live in is gonna kill them will make you sick and you can eat all the alkaline foods in the world you want. If you gotta live with the burden of stress pending on your mind, pending on your conscience as to if your children are going to be safe in the neighborhood that you have to live in every single day that you wake up. If you have to worry about what kind of school they're going to and the type of children they're going to be around and the gangs that's in the community. If you have to worry about these type of things day to day, no amount of good food you will eat will diffuse the potentiality of you being sick. So it's all about the right combination. It's not just about eating good. Because there's two type of diets, man. There's the physical consumption and there's the spiritual consumption. What are you consuming spiritually? Then it's the mental consumption and that's based on cognizance, all right? So your environment, your neighborhood, that'd be your mental consumption. What kind of advertisements are constantly being put at your way? Are you vacating enough? Are you meditating? See, that's your cognizance. That's all about your mentality. That's what you're mentally consuming. Then spiritually, it's about what kind of things are you reading and what kind of conversations are you having? What type of ideas are you entertaining? Okay, because that can cause serious turmoil within you. You assimilate the wrong type of information from people day to day. You become that which you eat. Okay, so if you're uh, constantly in deliberation with people that make you angry, you will become an angry person. If you're around bitter people who only express to you bitter ideas and go into diatribes about other people that they are bitter about, you in turn will become that which you ate or that which you consumed as far as conversation is concerned. So we have to be able to chart our consumption, okay, on a mental level, spiritual level and the physical level and the household also has to be broken down in the same case what I mean by that <clears throat> what takes place in the bedroom is a form of consumption what takes place in the living room is a form of consumption what takes place in the kitchen is a form of consumption and there goes mental spiritual and physical all again these are the things that can make us sick who are you sleeping with and what kind of sex acts are you getting into that's a form of consumption that can kill you. You could be sleeping with the enemy. What are you watching on TV when you're in the living room? What are you cooking when you're in the kitchen? Okay, so these are different places that make up our household that warrant a specific behavior or cognition or awareness so we don't destroy ourselves and in turn become our own enemies. So yeah, I know we say black power, we gotta kill this white man, we gotta do all this other stuff, I hate you. But at the end of the day, you have to keep in mind, <laughs> the number one line of defense is self-preservation. And if you're eating foods that compromise your ability to engage a war that you say you are ready to fight, then you are working against yourself. making this turn here or are you driving straight Drive you're straight. going straight and then you're gonna make a left you see where the cvs is yeah nope yeah on the left left whole foods is right next to cvs thank you baby you know everything no i 
right, dog. <laughs> Not as much as you do. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> it's too good at it. I'll do this 12 times and still don't know where the hell the hope is. <laughs> I just don't put certain information in my brain. It's amazing. I just refuse to retain way to go. It'll make it work. It'll definitely make it work. I'm glad y'all here with me. So, uh, Ryan with us to get this food. Keep us company. I really dig that. I think we could go here. You know, handicapped people be having shit shut. You wanna go back? We at Whole Foods right now, or at least I'm in the Whole Foods parking lot. And this is the tricky part about when I'm parking somewhere, because I don't want to just park anywhere, because I ain't got just any car. And we don't want nobody messing around. Yep, so we at Whole Foods right now. Baby, who that's up? It's the girls. Hello. What's up? Yep. <laughs> we definitely recorded, and I can hear you. And now the whole world will hear you when the video go up. As you can see, we got a nice little camera shot. So when I'm driving, I can tell it's somebody's coming from behind. You know, back in the old days, we had to look in the rearview mirror to see what was going on. Shit's changed quite a bit, hasn't it? <laughs> if Whole Foods sold like shoes, she would never leave. the quality of things in life. Yeah, and that means I got to stay on the grind. <laughs> and that's just hey, one wife. <laughs> she takes, ah, uh, man. She's like four wives and one herself. Okay, let's do the food shopping. All right, all right, all right. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Everything we get, we're gonna go into more in depth when we do the cooking stream. Just showing you what we get. Of course, omega 3. I mean, avocado. Definitely avocado. You want a semi sauce. You know, you don't really want them so soft. It depends on how soon you want to eat it. When the lovely almanac picks up the avocados. It just tastes good automatically. Yeah, I'm not. 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 I'm Black tomatoes. Some people call them brown tomatoes. Kumatu. The other tomatoes are very acidic, so we either get plum tomatoes or cherry tomatoes or kumatos. Okay, now we're gonna look for some red bananas. See, they normally have red bananas in here. We wanna look for those. Of course, that's good for digestion again, and it's even higher in potassium. That would make cake. Uh, you definitely want to do that. So that way, if you get cut or bruised, you'll heal a whole lot quicker. Potassium <laughs> is awesome for that. The Ecuadorian red bananas are most ideal. If you're not doing that, then you want to get the baby bananas because they harness little to no mucus. We eat these big hybrid bananas, it produces mucus in the body. So these, I'll be stomping the shit out of these. But I got drama. So <laughs> these five major electrolytes on the beam. Like potassium, <laughs> electrolyte. When these particles get into the water, 
helps power the human body, which is electron. So like calcium is one of them, potassium, magnesium, sodium. You know, these are the different electrolytes that you can uh, expect to consume when you get here. The energy drinks are great, but it's filled with a lot of sugar. Oh. This is really ideal. There go the red bananas right there. Red bananas. Need these. Get two of these. Need red bananas. And do you about it? It's like baby bananas in the same way. Uh, I don't even know what the hell these are good for. My wife is from Guyana. <laughs> and this is what she does. So. It's good for your blood. There she goes. She can break it down. It's good for the blood. It's like it's a sorrow. I was joking though. Like she said, it purifies the blood. This is for osmoregulation. It helps the body pass nutrients through its cyclic changes of water throughout the course of the day. One of the many reasons that the asparagus is real good, so you want to get that. You want to get key limes. These limes actually have seeds in it. Smaller limes. You don't want to get big limes. The big limes are not as effective. And with a key lime, if you cut, cut a key lime in half, Per one gallon of water, you can alkaline the water. You don't even need a big ancient water machine. You don't need to spend fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. If you get you a key lime and you cut the key lime in half and squeeze it in the gallon of water, you'll make the whole gallon alkaline. It just saves you fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> How about that one? Now all the guys selling you the machines on the like a mug. Trust me. And I do it all the time. And I use the pH strips to show and prove that the pH of the water goes up significantly. I buy distilled water, a little bit of pink salt, half a key lime per gallon, like you said, and the pH goes up significantly. That's my man, so don't think we don't bring that info into the hood. But we done came up. See? This game banging prior. You start eating that, that alkaline food and drinking that alkaline water, and then he became different from the rest of the host. He definitely one of the success stories in our community. Get some string beans. I like to deal with them like this. I don't, don't get no canned food, please. You don't get canned food. And the preservative that they use for canned food is pork sperm or pig sperm. They got a machine that be jerking the shit out of a swine. They throw that joint in the can. Now, that may not actually be too accurate, that part, but the reality is that they preserve the food, they preserve canned food by incorporating pork sperm into the cans to prolong its shelf life. So take that into consideration the next time you open you up some canned food and you want to eat your little vahina sausages and you're looking at that little jelly in there, you might as well do some pork head. That's what they're doing. And you gotta understand, they, <laughs> you gotta understand that uh, they are always looking for an excuse to give us swine. The bristles of your toothbrush are probably made up of swine. So you gotta be careful. So, you're gonna get some of these nice, beautiful apples. It's golden. You know, I got that juicer. How many that? What's the name of that juicer? Bullet. Bullet. I got that bullet. So, you know, that joint's turned this into juice in like seconds. A few seconds. Oh, we need the okra. Bambia is what we call it in our language. That. Your diet doesn't necessarily have to be exactly like someone else's. It depends what you're looking to do. As an author, I have to buy brain food. So one of the brain foods that I purchase is portobello because it's high in copper. And copper is a conductor of electricity. And it has some gold content in it. And gold is a superconductor of electricity. You mix it with alkaline water filled with electrolytes like the sodium, like the calcium, like the potassium, like the magnesium, then you're really on a, a beautiful path to powering your mind. So you don't fall asleep when you learn new information. Has 
I need more because I just put the, okay. the package in. Yeah, so it all depends on what are you eating for to accomplish what. See, a lot of times people think, oh, you just talking about eating healthy because you want to outlive everybody. Well, I know somebody that was eating beef and chicken and pork, and they lived longer than the vegetarian. There's a lot of reasons why that would happen. Now, many people say, what's the sense of even eating good because we're going to die anyway? So I ask those same people, what's the sense of saving your money if you're going to spend it anyway? See, that's a great analogy to hit them with. Now, what I'm telling you personally, you should buy food to cater to your occupation or cater to your goals. I have to eat a certain way or drink a certain way because I have to keep my mind powered so I can write books for 20, 30 hours on end or so I can sleep every other day. My brother is here. He sees what I do throughout the day. You know, he's in the house. He can tell you that I'm up all morning, straight through the night, studying, working, working, straight. But that's because of the elements that I'm taking in. So this dietary regimen really corresponds with being able to stay up for hours on it, not getting fatigued, and being able to assimilate new information without it drugging you. And what I mean by that is, when you learn new information, it has a tendency to put you to sleep. <laughs> so you wanna, you wanna knock that out. So I'm gonna uh, sh share some herbal combinations to give you more endurance so you can stay up longer. Because, I mean, studying is very hard if you're gonna get tired when you study. But the best mushroom to get, because most mushrooms are not all of that, the best mushroom to get is John John mushroom. Patients know about it. You can boil it and drink the black water from it. I used that water to help me as part of my therapeutic package when I had diabetes. Boil the John John mushroom, drink the water. Amazing. But you can also eat the John John. But it's really the water that it produces when you eat that black mushroom. It's amazing. Ready? Okay? We want to get red kale and we want to get green kale. But red kale is even higher in iron fluorine. The main reason many of us are suffering from anemia, more especially in case sick cell anemia, is because of iron deficiency, yes. But what type of iron deficiency? Iron chlorine this deficiency. Most of us are trying to get the iron that we get from red meats. Not a good look. The iron that we need is iron chlorine. We fill it with melanin and chlorophyll is first cousin to melanin. And what you have to take into account is that the iron that we have been deficient in as a community is iron chlorine, which you can only get from dark green leafy vegetables. Typically in the case of kale, Nero made Are you ready? Are you ready? Iron fluorine. And I mean, eating it raw especially is the best. This is brain food at its best. What is that again, red kale? People that are uh, iron deficient are what? Always fatigued and drowsy. And once you get the right type of iron in the body, good look. Power the brain. The red kale is done with the special K2. Yeah, vitamin also K. also great for I said, I was just building them about that the other day. Yeah. That's called red kale. Vitamin K. Okay. Yeah. So the red kale is definitely good. So if your eyes, if you have your eye problems before you receive some kind of medical help, you should just give the kale a try. Okay? I'm not a certified professional. I don't have no certificates in the house. Let me just say all that. <laughs> so I do come out of it. But what I'm going to tell you is, anybody that I've been helping out with this information, they can tell you that the red kale enhances the eyesight. Just juice it. Hold up. Eat it raw. Every day for about two weeks straight. And tell me you don't feel a difference with your eyesight. You can cut it. Look, look. look at this. She making the glass bottles pass out and fake. Go ahead. The salt and tomatoes did in the previous house. Hey, what up, Amy? That's my brother, Amy Rashid. Just called her. Hi, peace. Yeah. 
Yeah, so of course we got the black water, high in fulvic acid, great for the prostate, great for the wound. When you're doing the, you know, that wild dance in the background, private, confined to your household, this has done a great deal of service to my personal life. I know it's a family show, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> yeah, so we, we go hard with these. We just, yeah. Black water. Black water. Like I said, it's hot. The fulvic acid is what actually makes it black. Like I said, it's great for the prostate, great for the Thickness got to be on point. Essential. This is nine and a half hour blend. You know, some people be lying, yo, I be drinking 15 pH. <laughs> I mean, at that point, you're drinking ammonia, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so don't be lying, you know what I'm saying? be lying, you know? <laughs> so, if you want to eat junk food for a what you want to get is something called blue chips or red chips. This is really the potato chips of our house, seaweed. Again, high in omega-3 for the brain. They always tell you get fish oil or eat fish to get your omega-3. Now, China leads the world in technology. One of the things that's uh, customary for them to do is eat some fish early in the morning, every day religiously. For my daughter that speaks four languages, and she was speaking four since the time she was four years old, I've been feeding her seaweed and avocado early in the morning, every morning. And then at the night, I let her eat a Haitian mango. That's for emotions. A lot of people, with emotion, they suffer from emotional stability, particularly females, especially during the time when they go on a cycle because they, they're losing elements that they don't replenish. They don't make a concerted effort to replace that which they lose next month. Mangoes every night, especially for women, but great for men as well. Mangoes every night, emotional stability. In the morning, eat avocado, or eat seaweed. Or what we do, we'll put the seaweed and the avocado into a wrap and we'll eat it like that. Some people are wasabi type of it's, it's hot in the morning, so maybe you, maybe you don't want to deal with wasabi. I ain't like it at first, but it's good. Now, this is what you could do. If you, if you must eat chips, if you don't like to eat too much chips because it can mess up your teeth. If you're going to eat any kind of chips, blue chips or red chips. Oh, pardon me, blue chips or red hot blues? This is topped with cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is good for blood circulation. If the herb is yellow, it's good for digestion. If the herb is red, it's good for blood circulation. Every color has a reason that nature enforced behind it to help us. So we see a color, the color is a signification of what it will do for you when it's consumed. So I just gave you two examples. So like if I'm using the herb yarrow, that's good for digestion. And the reason why I know that is because it's yellow. If I see cayenne pepper on the, on the chip, I'm like, that's great. Because red corresponds to blood circulation. And one of the top causes for disease is a lack of circulation. So most people who are diabetic will get their foot cut off it's because of poor circulation. Then the foot is dying, they didn't have to cut it. Circulation, you always want to promote circulation. So if you're all going to eat some kind of junk food, Red Hot Blues, this is what we do. But for us, this is our number one chip in the house. Seaweed. I had a Negro say, why y'all trying to eat white? <laughs> Man. Don't you know most of these things is growing in African areas? <laughs> How can we be eating white when the foods that we eat like fungo and everything is coming from African areas? Fungo's off the chain, but we actually got to go to African market for that. That's like, I got some phone yo, yeah. yo, we got to make that Friday. Phone yo is on the list Friday. Okay, uh, we need more seaweed because that's not going to work. This is how we do it. You see this? Uh, wasabi. This is what we normally do when we get the things stored. This is, I'm not even fronting. This is like how we normally do it. 
<laughs> and, and on some, some nigga shit. Like, we normally start the eating while we in here. <laughs> we just say, yo, just ring this up. This is true. Mm -hmm. I'm just keeping it a buck. This is how we normally do things. They've been too conservative while we've been on camera so far. <laughs> now we will show you how to eat the seaweed. Chips. <laughs> you guys are bad. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, let's go. You know how I do with this kind of stuff. Come on. Yeah, if you get scared, she think we're on your office. <laughs> 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 you guys are bad. Real. I was trying to figure out. I like the red hot boots. Yeah. Oh, okay. Red wine sea salt. This will make your food. Alkaline, okay. So sometimes when you cook in food and the pots you cook it in, after you make the commitment to buy food to make it alkaline, the pots make the food acidic. Back in the days, our elders used to cook in glass pots, so it wouldn't compromise the integrity of the alkalinity of the food. So if you're not cooking in the cast iron pots or glass pots, make sure you get. Some red salt, or black salt, or pink salt to at least keep the alkalinity at a constant because the pots are turning the food acidic, the type of pots that you can buy. Grapeseed oil. You need to get this. Okay. Um, get you some, some good oil. Olive oil, uh, it's cool. Especially y'all that be deep frying. <coughs> Uh, it could compromise the food big time. We didn't really suggest too much deep frying anyway, but breaks you all this out there. So right now we're getting the spirals. We're gonna get four beans. And I'm gonna get some. What is that? Well, spell. Let's get some spell. Oh. We can get penne or elbow. Mobani, my one, Mobani, my These are real good, especially when you make that uh, tomato okra sauce. Oh yeah, that tomato okra sauce is amazing. Plus, you don't want to do this with traditional grains, like flour and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Spelt heads. I like these because they're real light. I always like to eat food that makes doesn't feel like I have a bunch in me, but when it feeds the cells, you don't feel like eating a second and a third time. Oftentimes when you eat like the Chinese food is filled with monosodium glutamate, which they have 13 other uh, cloak terms for it, you know, so you don't know that you're consuming it. How monosodium glutamate tricks the brain into believing that the food that you're eating is delicious and in turn increases your appetite. So a lot of times people eat their Chinese food, they'll eat a bunch of Chinese food, feel full, and still feel like they have to eat another one. Because that food does not feed the cells. You want food that feeds the cells. When you eat food that feeds the cells, your appetite eventually diminishes. Keep that in mind. But I like the spell. Good. More powerful than the spell would be amaranth and kamuk. And even more powerful than them would be tef tef, Ethiopian grain. Amazing. Black like which is in the lymphatic system, which is dealing with the blood, which is extremely good for the blood. Black cannabis. Yeah, so also, 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 Black so all black everything. That's all we gotta do. Get some amaranth flakes. Why not? We need this. This is banging. I like the taste, but of course I'm in this for the health benefit. Like I said, you don't want to deal with the type of flowers that help reduce mucus in the body. Most of the causes for these diseases poor circulation and a lack of mucus, I mean overproduction of mucus. And the foods that we're eating is producing the mucus. And that's one of the catch-22s of getting x-ray. 
you get an x-ray, but you can't see the mucus through the x-ray. So you can keep eating food since we do some mucus, not see the mucus until it becomes or creates a situation in the body where the cells start to coagulate and creates a malignant or abnormal growth of cells in a particular area. And that abnormal growth is caused by the mucus being the glue binding it together. Coconut milk is what we do. I like to make my milk from scratch. One of the old fashioned types. Uh, it's, uh, I like to make my milk from scratch. I like to get my almonds and go to work myself. Matt. <laughs> What's going on, baby? You gonna help mommy? You gonna help her? Psych. Psych? You're not gonna help her? Yes. Well, come on. Looks like she needs your help right now. She needs your help right, right now, baby. Let me see what Matt is doing. So let's see what this bill comes to. I must admit this lifestyle, depending on what direction you go, it may cost more bread. But it doesn't have to be that expensive. You can always fast. That don't cost no one up. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. But we work hard just when we need it like this for real. Alright. That's how we do it, baby. Whole Foods in Hollywood, part one.